to another TrainML tutorial. TrainML is a GPU as a service platform specifically designed for deep learning. Our platform lets you get up and running on GPUs with just a few clicks without the need for managing servers, learning a new framework, or enduring a lengthy software implementation. This tutorial is an example of how you can programmatically provision TrainML resources in an event-driven manner. We will be using AWS as the event system, but similar functionality is available in other major cloud providers. In this example, we will simulate a company that needs to do image classification inference on new images generated as part of their business process. The company already has a trained model and has created a process that will batch the new images into a zip file and load them into an S3 bucket. From there, we'll need to process those images with our trained model and deliver the output to another S3 bucket. To accomplish this, we will use S3's ability to invoke a Lambda function when objects are added to the bucket. That Lambda function will then initiate a TrainML inference job using the TrainML SDK and API keys that are stored securely in AWS's parameter store. The TrainML inference job will then pull the images from the S3 bucket, run the classification model, and save the outputs back to S3. The first step is to generate a TrainML API key and store it securely in your AWS account so that Lambda can use the TrainML SDK. To do so, go to the account settings page in your TrainML account. In the API Keys section, click the Create button. This will automatically download a credentials.json file, which contains user and key properties. Go to Systems Manager in AWS and click Parameter Store. Create secure string parameters for slash trainml slash API underscore user and slash trainml slash API underscore key and set them to the values from the credentials.json file. Note, if you use a different parameter name or use a non-default KMS key, you will need to update the Lambda function code and the execution rule to reflect those changes. The next step is to create an IAM user in your AWS account so that TrainML can access the data in your S3 bucket. To do so, go to IAM, Users, click Add Users, give the user a memorable name, and select only Programmatic uh, Access as the access type. For the permissions, do not assign any at this time, and continue through the wizard until you see the access key and secret key. In another browser tab, go to the TrainML platform account settings and scroll to the third-party keys section. Select AWS from the add dropdown and paste in the key and secret values from the AWS IAM screen. Go back to IAM and select the user. In the Permissions Policies section, click Add Inline Policy. Click the JSON tab and paste the example policy from the tutorial documentation. Give the policy a descriptive name and click Create Policy. The rest of the AWS resources will be created with a CloudFormation template provided in the Tutorial Code repository. The create stack script generates the Lambda packages with its dependencies and deploys the CloudFormation stack in two stages in order to avoid circular dependencies. The CloudFormation stack will create a deployment bucket for Lambda function code, the data bucket for images and annotations, the Lambda function itself, the Lambda execution role, and the Lambda event notification and, and permission. To deploy the stack, ensure you have properly configured the AWS CLI for your account and run the create stack script from a terminal window. Once the stack is deployed, we can see all the resources it created in CloudFormation. One of these is the data bucket. If we look at the properties of the bucket, we can see the event notification that will trigger the destination Lambda function whenever there is a put event in the incoming folder. When we look at the Lambda function, we can also see this setup under triggers in the configuration section, as well as the permissions it has to systems manager parameters we created and the permission to the S3 data bucket. We also see some environment variables that the Lambda function code uses. The trainml configdir environment variable is particularly important since the Lambda home directory is a read-only file system. This reconfigures the SDK scratch directory to the slash temp folder, which is read-write. 
the Lambda function code itself is less than 100 lines. The imports and the trainML client setup are done outside the Lambda handler code, so subsequent executions within the next five minutes do not have to rerun these steps. The create job function is what actually creates the job given the path of the input data and the path of the output data. It uses the examples code repository as the model code, and the model inference command is to run the predict.py Python file in that repository. This Python file simply looks through every file in the input folder that ends in .jpg, runs it through a pre-trained VGG16 model, and saves a .json file with the same name to the trainML output path that contains the top five predicted classes for each image. The Lambda handler function processes each S3 bucket notification, extracts the object key, and formulates the correct input and output paths for the create job function. The create job function will return when the job has been successfully created and provide information like the job's unique ID that will allow you to fetch its status later. Although this is not implemented in this example, we recommend that you store this information in a persistent data store so you can monitor the job status programmatically. To activate the pipeline, run the push to new images.sh script. This simply pushes the image.zip file from the code repository to the incoming folder of the data bucket. In only a couple minutes, the entire process will run and you will see a new file in the process folder of the S3 bucket. You can download this file and see the five JSON files that the model generated. If you go back to the TrainML platform, in the inference job section, you can see the finished job and access the job information and log output. Once you're done, you can run the delete stack at .sh script to remove the AWS resources. You will have to manually remove the parameter store parameters as well as the IAM IM user in order to complete the cleanup. As we've seen in this tutorial, the TrainML SDK lets you create GPU-enabled inference jobs with only a few lines of code and can be easily integrated into an event-driven architecture. If you'd like to learn more, you can check out our documentation site at docs.trainml.ai or shoot us an email at sales at trainml.ai. If you run into any challenges running this example or anything else, you can always contact us at support at trainml.ai. Thanks for watching.